Hey there, this is Richcraft, and today I made a Godzilla vs. Tiamat diorama using polymer clay and cast in an ocean of resin. So with a little preview out of the way, let's get to planning. And I know I said it, planning, like I do that. But I did for once because it's resin and there's nothing more that scares me than resin. So anyway, I did some working out, some sketching with a pencil, drew up my Godzilla. It's originally going to be Shimo, but watching the movie I realised I liked Tiamat way, way, way better. Shimo just didn't speak to me. So printing out this two scale, seven centimetre Godzilla that we can make our armature off of, which doesn't really matter because I go off scale later on, but I tried my best and that's what matters. So using this thick wire, we can build up our body of Godzilla and also build it up with some clay because unlike most living beings, these creatures are made from polymer clay, uh, contrary to scientists who believe it's scales and muscles and tendons. But anyway, not to disprove Albert Einstein wrong or anything, but we can bulk up the arms with some shoulder blades at the back and build up the pecs with some cores of clay, blending them in with the silicone shaper. That's the aim of the game here. Just sort of put balls of clay wherever they look natural and just blend them in so they look more natural, I guess. Anyway, we can get this big sheet of paper and stick it down and start building up the head, adding in all the details, the sockets for the eyes and the mounds on the snout. So taking a look at our Godzilla, I can pass it off as half decent and move on to the texture roller. So I just got a ball of clay, rolled it up to a needle so I can get to the hard to reach points and using a sculpting tool rubbed on the texture of that to give me the inverse pattern, hence giving me the pattern of the sculpting tool when I apply the roller. So with that little bit of logic out of the way, we can move on to the feet. Using some balls of clay, blending them in, like I said, that's just what we do. And using the silicone shaper to mark out all the points of which we want the three toes to be on. And doing the same for the hands as well. Whipping out some blue cos clay now. Um, my little rat brain can't process all the same colours, then having to paint them differently later on. I don't know if you experience the same thing. Probably wouldn't, it's just a me thing. But anyway, I like to work with this coloured clay just for this to sort of break up the monotone so I can focus on what colours go where when I paint. So enough with the rambling on, I can add the spikes, blend them in, cut them out and sort of twirl them into spiky shapes for the dorsal fins, about three spikes per fin, I guess. So working our way all the way down to the tail with the dorsal fins, then we'll add three rows, which I didn't bother recording the rest because it's just three or two more technically of the same thing. And then using some pre-baked nails and toes or teeth, whatever you want to call them, I bake these prior so that they keep their pointy shape and I don't have to worry about damaging them. And with that, the full shape of our Godzilla is basically finished and we can roll on the texture roll. And that's the texture it looks like. So I'm pretty stoked with that. And then we can move on to the eyes, just adding in two blue balls of clay and a eyebrow above that. Then making the sort of armor plates that go underneath Godzilla's tail and along his stomach lining. And I think we can call it decent. So going to just add some cling film around the edges and cut into that. Um, sculptors tend to do this so that the lines aren't sharp and it helps me create really good scars. And onto the painting. So do you remember how I mentioned how I like to use colored clays so and I have to paint it much? Well, that's just one layer to get the deep blue using some inks and then one layer on the blue. And then, you know, we get the dark blue Godzilla base with the lighter blue spikes. Just going over to highlight the spikes and painting all the nails black as well. And then just dry brushing over the edges to highlight that texture that we made earlier. And doing the same on the spikes themselves. 
and that's how Godzilla finished. And on to Tiamat. So Tiamat is the Serpent Titan, whatever you want to call it. Um, but anyway, it was in the new Godzilla X Kong movie. Loved the design. But I'm pretty sure my one is not very accurate because I took some artistic liberties as well as the fact that I had to look on the internet for some very, very sketchy leaked images. But anyway, I did all the math here to figure out that Tiamat should approximately be 12 centimeters given that how Godzilla was to the feet gonna be seven. So that's where I messed up. I counted this tail in the length of Godzilla. Um, obviously, you know, when you do this math sort of thing with sculpting, it's never gonna be great. So that's why the resin port got very crowded in the end because it was much bigger. But I'm still happy with that. So we can just cut out a noodle about 12 centimeters long and add all the coils on the body to sort of build up the general shape. Blend them in with the silicone shaper and the ball stylus. Jamming a wire in afterwards to make my life easier yet harder because I should have done this before. And then outlining the top and bottom using two coils of clay on either side. So we have the top of the body of Tiamat and the bottom. And then adding these, I don't know what they were. I thought they were gills at first, but then they didn't really look like gills. So I just sort of blend them in and took the artistic liberties from there. Whatever looked nice, looked nice. So that's sort of what I did. So just adding in the lining on the top, so I thought it looked nice. And then the spikes obviously were in, in the image and then the spikes on the back as well. Just some balls that get blended in and a pointy like shape. And then we can move on to the red parts. So it's blue in the picture above, but that's before the movie itself because Tim, it's a pinkish sort of red purple in the movie. So I went with that design and using some wires, I managed to get the shapes of the fins. Obviously they weren't exactly the same, but I just thought they were cool. So I'm pretty happy with it. And then this technique I caught off North the Border. I'm sure you've all seen him and if you haven't, make sure to check him out. Where you get some wires, jam them in, and you can get this very cool fin-like shape. Very realistic, it was in his Feraligator video. Um, so check that out if you have not already. And with that for alligator video, it's a realistic Pokemon set in resin. And I tend to gravitate to sort of ideas he has, uh, not necessarily, but also at the same time, I very much enjoy what he makes. But I was thinking of making a water legendary in resin. It's realistic, so let me know if you want to see that. Anyway, we can bend our Tiamat into shape, match him up against Godzilla to make sure it's right, and then use the same texture roller on the body of Tiamat. And that's the body done, at least. Then we can get on to the head, which gets a shark-like sort of look at the beginning. And then we can add the bottom jaw as well. And then the mouth on the top of the snout, just as we did with Godzilla. Adding in the eye and an eyebrow, blending that in with the ball stylus, and adding all the other features of a sea serpent face. Now that we have bulked up the sides of the neck to sort of blend in the head, we can add these weird side fins that he has four and then jam in the teeth as well using some pre baked spikes and using the pliers as well, similar to how I did for the talons on Godzilla. I think our Tiamat is looking pretty awesome, so we can get to painting on this one. Similar to Godzilla, it gets a wash, like a, a ink sort of wash with some deep maroon a bit and then the all the red parts get hit with a red and the teeth get hit with a white then we can make our acrylic base for the resin pour so just using some perspex pouring in some water and finding out that it is not waterproof so pouring it all out and fixing it up and then just to be safe as well as the fact that Godzilla can't be standing in water randomly I mixed up some dirt with some UV resin and some black ink, poured that in, tried to cure it, did not cure, so I ended up going back with some Mod Podge, uh, watered down Mod Podge to seal it. Then this is some fishing wire I bought off Amazon, you know, one day delivery and all that, so that was fabulous. 
uh, cutting it and we can attach it to a ruler through the fin of Tiamat to suspend Tiamat midair so that she is sort of levitating or swimming in the resin so then we can get to the port itself which terrified me putting on the gloves because you don't want resin on your skin so I did about how much was it I think it was like one and a bit liters so one liter for the 1000 subscribers now so this was a big milestone for me I tried taking on a resin pour for this milestone itself and then we can pour it in doing this about three four times until we filled it all the way to the top and set it aside so thank you guys so much for 1000 subscribers it means a lot to me and hopefully we can keep pushing to more and more from here so taking our cured resin about 36 hours later going with the hammer and just hammering away all of the perspex sheets and that's about it so we're just going to carve out the edges and sand down and mess up the whole pour itself by adding some UV resin on top. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and we're on to the reveal shots. And with that, today's video is drawn to a close. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to treat this video right by liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing with your friends, family, and enemies. Head over to my Patreon for more exclusive content. And thank you all for so much for 1,000 subscribers. And with that, I'll be seeing you guys next time.